वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट वंस अगेन इन टू दिस क्लास ऑफ नंबर थ्री एंड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव सीन डेफिनेशन ऑफ फेरे फ्रैक्शन सम प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ फेरे फ्रैक्शन सम थ्योरम सम लैमाज एंड नाउ वी आर मूविंग अ हेड टू फर्दर मोर थ्योरम्स ऑफ फेरे फ्रैक्शन आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद अ वेरी वेरी इजी थ्योरम वेरी वेरी इजी रिजल्ट यू कैन से द थ्योरम और द रिजल्ट वट यू वॉन्ट टू से इज इफ एच अपॉन के एच डैश अपॉन के डैश आर कंजेक्टिव फेरे फ्रैक्शन फेरे फ्रैक्शन ऑफ ऑर्डर एन देन एन माइनस के इज लेस देन के डैश इज लेस देन और इक्वल टू एन दिस इज वेरी इजी थियोरम द रिजल्ट इज वेरी यूजफुल बट इज वेरी इजी so let us see how to prove it the proof is just in uh, two or three lines not more than two or three lines uh, since h by k and h dash by k dash are the consecutive fair fractions of order n we have already proved in the previous video that in such a case k plus k dash must be greater than n and if k plus k dash is greater than n take this k to the other side you will get your k dash is greater than n minus k or you can say n minus k is less than k dash that means this part is true secondly your h dash by k dash belongs to fn as h dash by k dash is a conject uh, is a fair fraction of order n so it belongs to fn and if a fair fraction belongs to n then its denominator is less than or equal to the order of the fere sequence so this means your k dash is less than or equal to n that means that this part is also proved so this was a very easy result very easy theorem what do you want to say so i have started with a very easy theorem and now i am moving on to another theorem another result uh, which is little bit typical but not too much the result says that the theorem says that if एच बाई के एच डैश बाई के डैश आर कंजेक्टिव फेरे फ्रैक्शन फेरे फ्रैक्शन ऑफ ऑर्डर एन देन पार्ट ए मॉड ऑफ एच बाई के माइनस एच प्लस एच डैश ओवर के प्लस के डैश इज लेस देन और इक्वल टू वन अपॉन के एन प्लस वन एंड सेकेंडली मॉड ऑफ एच डैश बाई के डैश माइनस एच प्लस एच डैश अपॉन के प्लस के डैश इज लेस देन और इक्वल टू वन अपॉन के डैश एन प्लस वन so these two results will prove one by one the proof once again is very easy so let us see how to prove it part a in part a we are starting with left hand side of the inequality that is mod of h by k minus h plus h dash over k plus k dash what you are to do just take lcm and try to simplify it so what you will get k k plus k dash and here you will get h times k plus h times k dash minus h times k minus h dash times k this h k plus and minus these two terms will be cancelled out and you will be left with look into the numerator h k dash this is h k dash minus h dash k and since these are two consecutive pair fractions we know that h k dash minus h dash k is minus 1 so it is minus 1 upon k k plus k dash and you can remove the mod by changing this minus 1 to 1 as k and k plus k dash are positive numbers so i am removing mod from here and i am changing this minus 1 to 1 now we know that k plus k dash is greater than n 
and both are positive. This is positive, this is also positive. So you can take reciprocal. Taking reciprocal, the sign of inequality will change and k plus k dash will be less than 1 upon n. Or to be more clear, k plus k dash is greater than n. So it may be if greater than or equal to n plus 1 because in the result we need n plus 1. So k plus k dash is greater than or equal to n plus 1. So 1 upon k plus k dash is less than or equal to 1 upon n plus 1 and use it here to get less than or equal to 1 upon k n plus 1. So the first part is being proved that h by k minus h plus h dash by k by k dash is less than or equal to 1 upon k n plus 1. Similarly, the second part can be also proved. So let us see the proof of the second part which is almost similar. Here you will get h dash k dash once again take the LCM k dash k plus k dash mod simplify h dash k h dash k minus h dash k dash sorry plus h dash k dash minus h k dash minus h dash k dash. Now h dash k dash will be cancelled and you will be left with h dash k minus h k dash. h dash k minus h k dash and this time the value is equal to 1. So I am going to remove the mod again. It is 1 upon k dash k plus k dash and once again since 1 upon k plus k dash is less than or equal to 1 upon n plus 1 you can say here that it is less than or equal to 1 upon k dash into n plus 1. So the second part is also being proved very easily, very comfortably and uh, the proof is not complicated. Now we are moving towards another theorem where this result will be used, may be used and this next theorem is a little bit more complicated. Not too much complicated, a little bit too much, uh, more complicated. The theorem says, the theorem says, let x be any real number and n be any positive integer, that means natural number, any positive integer then there exists then there exists a reduced fraction a reduced fraction a reduced fraction means it's a uh, you can say that the uh, gcd of uh, numerator and denominator will be one so there exists a reduced fraction a upon b with b definitely greater than 0 but is less than or equal to n such that such that mod of x minus a upon b is less than or equal to 1 upon b n plus 1. What we are given with and we, what we are to prove? We are given that x is any real number. We are given that n is any positive integer. And then what we are to do? We are to find a reduced fraction. This time I am not talking about fire fraction. Simple. It is a reduced fraction a upon b what we have to find with denominator definitely greater than 0 because it is a fraction and is less than or equal to n and this fraction a upon b must satisfy this inequality that mod of x minus a upon b is less than or equal to 1 upon b into 1 plus 1. This, this fraction a upon b we have to find. So how to find it? So we are moving on to the proof once again or proof x is any real number. So whenever you are having any real number, definitely this real number will have some integral part and some fractional part. So separate this number x into its integral and fractional parts. Let x be mod of x plus x0, where not mod x, sorry, it is box x, where box x means the integral part of x and this x0 is the fractional part. That means that means your x0 is x minus its integral part. Definitely, since this x0 is fractional part, 
this x naught must be greater than or equal to zero and is less than one. This is a must. This is a fraction which lies between zero and one. And we know that all the Fermat fractions are lying between zero and one. This is also a fraction lying between zero and one. So there must be two consecutive Fermat fractions of order n such that x naught lies between these two. So therefore, therefore there exists h upon k, h dash upon k dash in f n in the Fermat sequence of order n such that such that your x naught is greater than or equal to h by k and is strictly less than h dash by k dash. We have taken equality on one side, other side I am taking strict inequality. That means if x naught is your Fermat fraction, take it equal to the first Fermat fraction of these two consecutive Fermat fractions. Now x naught lying between h by k and h dash by k dash. Also, also we know that h plus h dash k plus k dash it is not a Fermat fraction of order n but it may be a Fermat fraction of order n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3 or any order greater than n. It, it will be some Fermat fraction in some other uh, Fermat sequence of order greater than n. So this h plus h dash upon k plus k dash we know that it is greater than h by k and it is less than uh, k by k dash. Uh, that means what we are doing actually here is our h by k here is our h dash by k dash here is our h plus h dash upon k plus k dash now your x naught also lies between these two so x naught may be here x naught may be here so I am taking one case when x naught lying here the second part will be similar and I hope you will be able to solve the inequality for the second part yourself. So without loss of generality, without loss of generality, let your x naught being here. Let your x naught be, let x naught be such that x naught is greater than or equal to h by k but is less than h plus h dash mm -hmm. upon k plus k dash. Now, this is your x naught lying between these two. What we have to do? Uh, note that, note that uh, mod of mod of x minus h by k, x naught minus h by k. Actually, here it is your x naught. So I am taking this x naught minus h by k will be definitely less than this portion will be less than or equal to h plus h dash upon k plus k dash minus h upon k. This h plus h dash upon k plus k dash minus h by k we have seen in the previous theorem that it is less than or equal to 1 upon k n plus 1. This we have proved in the previous theorem. Now I am using it here. So now choose choose a reduced fraction choose a reduced fraction uh, a upon b such that such that your x minus a upon b is equal to x naught minus h upon k. It is possible. It is always possible to find such a reduced fraction a upon b. So I am, uh, I have taken a reduced fraction a by b, which satisfies this equation. From here, what is your a upon b? Your a upon b is h by k plus x minus x naught. And x minus x naught, your x minus x naught from the starting step, x minus x naught is box of x. So it is h by k plus box of x. This is your a upon b. Look that. What actually we wanted to prove, we are moving towards that. Now, now, your x minus 
a upon b mod of x minus a upon b is equal to since x minus a upon b is same as x not minus h upon k so it will be equal to x not minus h upon k and x not minus h upon k mod we have proved that it is less than or equal to 1 upon k n plus 1 this we have already proved and now i have used it now moving on to the other thing let us see what will be there in the remaining part we actually we want to show that b is lying between 0 and n this is the remaining part because this we have proved still here b is required we have proved k we need a b here so for that what we are to do uh, our a upon b was equal to h upon k plus box of x that means by taking lcm as k it will be h plus k box x now i'll try to show that i'll try to prove that a is actually equal to h plus k box x and b is actually equal to k for that a upon b is a reduced fraction that means gcd of a upon b is uh, a and b is one if gcd of h plus k box x and k is also one that means it is also in reduced form if two fractions are equal and both are in the reduced form then definitely numerator will be equal to the numerator and denominator will be equal to the denominator so what we are to actually prove here that gcd of these two is one let let gcd of h plus k h plus k box x and k be equal to d that means your d divides h plus k box x and d divides k also since d divides both these numbers d divides k means d also divides any multiple of k so multiple of k means k box x because box x is an integer so d divides d divides h plus k box x and d divides k box x and since d divides both these numbers so d must divide their difference and what is their difference h plus k box x minus k box x so k box x will be cancelled so what you will obtain you will obtain k d divides h now d divides k and d divides h that means d divides gcd of h and k what is h and k what are h and k actually h and k are the numerator and denominator of fair fraction of order n and we know that if we are having any fair fraction of any order then gcd of numerator and denominator is 1 so that means gcd of h and k is 1 so this means d divides 1 and it directly implies that d is equal to 1 and d is equal to 1 means gcd of h box x and k is 1 so what we have proved we have proved that the gcd of these two is 1 and gcd of these two is already 1 because it is in the reduced form this is a fraction this is also a fraction both are equal and both are in the reduced form that means numerator must be equal to the numerator and denominator must be equal to the denominator and i am taking just denominator so that means b is equal to k now your b is equal to k you know that k what is k k is the denominator of a fair fraction and we know that denominator of the fair fraction of order n lies between 0 and n but since k is equal to b you will get 0 is less than b is less than or equal to 1 which was one of the parts required to be proved also your b is equal to k and you have already shown that your x minus a upon b mod is less than or equal to uh, 1 upon k n plus 1 but since k is equal to b just substitute here the value of k so what you will get mod of x minus a upon b is less than or equal to 1 upon b n plus 1 and that is what was required to be proved so we have proved this theorem this is a very important theorem from the point of your ex examinations and for your research purposes as well so with this proof with this theorem i'm going to uh, stop this video here i'm going to end this video here we'll meet in the next video with more and more theorems and lemmas on fellow fractions till then thank you thank you once again